Hey guys, Stuart Trier here from Marketing Cheat Guides. Today I have on the show Jessica Foster from keysandcopy.com. She runs a copywriting SEO business and she's been doing this for four years and she was nice enough to join us today and share her story. So thank you so much for yeah. coming on. Why don't you tell the audience just a bit about yourself and your background and how you got into this particular line of work. Yeah, actually, uh, I did kind of the usual thing that college students do. They're feeling overwhelmed. They don't know what they want to do with their lives. And so uh, after I graduated, I started traveling. I felt like, why not start a blog to keep my friends and family updated on my travels? Um, come to find out running a website is a lot more complicated than people think. Uh, so I kind of just went down this rabbit hole about learning about SEO and content writing uh, managing a website and I you know made this community of amazing bloggers uh, and then I just kind of hit a wall with it and I realized I wanted to learn more about SEO so I got my first full-time job at an SEO agency um, it was definitely like you know onslaught of all this SEO information uh, but it was really good to just like dive into it and start doing client work and really seeing like the results pay off for for businesses in terms of like thousands of dollars coming in. And, you know, I'm like, I wanted to make a dif difference in other people's lives and SEO just seemed like a smart, a good way to do that actually. And also have a remote business. Um, so in working at the agency, I started taking on freelance clients on the side. Uh, my biggest issue with working at the agency was that I just didn't get very much vacation time. And also I was working exclusively with law firms, which was like a little dry for me. Um, and so, you know, like I had uh, maybe a handful of freelance clients and I just decided at some point that I wanted to go all in on this business, but being a little risk averse, I took on a side job as a nanny, uh, uh, which just gave me the steady income and kind of like this mental space I needed to scale my business up. And within three months I was making what could be a full-time income, but because of my commitment to the nanning job, I stayed with them for a year. And then after a year I was making much more than I anticipated making. Um, and since then I have been full-time remote. Uh, I've traveled to a bunch of different countries and it's just been like a really good journey. So that's wow. in a nutshell how I got started. <laughs> awesome. So what was your, you, you mentioned you went to college or university. And so what were you studying there? Did you do like an English or journalism degree or or what were you yeah. studying? Uh, I studied psychology, actually, um, which is very applicable to marketing. Absolutely. Uh, and I also did a lot of writing <laughs> in my courses. I've always kind of been a writer, and so that's what I love most about SEO is the SEO content component of it. Um, and I quickly realized that I didn't really love the technical component, and that's why I decided to niche down and focus on content. Uh, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, don't do that. Like, you're going to pigeonhole yourself. But I think I have been able to set myself apart because of doing this exclusive thing. Um, and I made more money than I thought I was going to make with it. And it ended up being like the right decision for me to focus on SEO content rather than launching a full-fledged SEO agency. Um, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and so when you, when you were first taking on freelance clients, how did you go about finding them? Um, yeah, so I love talking about this. Uh, I kind of just like, I distanced myself from a lot of like the chatter about like how to, you know, I don't know how to put it, basically like information overload, right? And I was trying to get inside the head of like my ideal client and where they would spend their time. So I joined a lot of like SEO Facebook groups. I was engaging on LinkedIn and I made friends with a lot of copywriters and I'm like, how are they framing their content in a way that attracts clients to them? Um, I didn't want to be the, the person in the comment section like, hey, here are my services. Hey, here are my services. Um, I also got a mentor who was doing what I wanted to do um, and with her like you know, encouragement, I started just posting more content related to SEO copywriting. And so by showcasing my expertise, I had people messaging me to work with me, which was an amazing thing. I didn't feel like I had to like hustle and slide into people's DMs to ask for clients. Um, and the, I got my first client doing that. But then also, you know, I was a little desperate because I was like, I don't know if this is a sustainable model to like do it this way. Um, and so I built out a referral network. So every client that I worked with would get a 10% like commission on every referral that they sent my way. 
So a lot of my clients were referrals from beginning. And then I was just churning out like the testimonials, like anyone that I worked with testimonial. I post that on my website, on LinkedIn, on fa- on my Facebook page, um, turn the testimonials into Facebook posts and like really up the like social proof mm-hmm. to like, you know, establish myself as an expert and like, yes, I am getting results for people. Um, and then it just gained so much more momentum, I think, than if I was like in the background and just kind of pop my head out whenever someone was like, hey, I need content, you know, like I never had to go on Upwork or anything like that. And I think it was mostly like value based, like inbound marketing for me. Uh, and that's pretty much what I do now, though I'm shifting a little bit. So. Awesome. And so you mentioned testimonials and I think it's something that's very much underutilized in the yes. online marketing space. So how did you go about getting the testimonials? Obviously you did good work, but what was your process in terms of making sure you were constantly getting a inbound yeah. flow of, of good testimonials? Yeah. Um, I am very conversational with my clients. Uh, it's very high touch, which is why I charge like premium prices. Um, so being on like a really good, like relationship with them, like they were excited to offer testimonials. Um, Sometimes they would just offer it. And sometimes I would just nudge them, right? Like as uh, we're wrapping up a final project over email and be like, Hey, I would really appreciate if you sent me a review, like this is what it means to me sort of thing. And just send them the link. And like, I've gotten a lot that way. Uh, Most of them I put to my Facebook page initially before I had a website. And then I would copy those and post them on the uh on my website and then have them basically copy and paste it on linkedin uh so yeah i think it was just i don't know if that it's not like a super robust marketing strategy but definitely having good relationships with your clients and like doing good work for them that they're excited to post a testimonial so nice and okay, so as you're starting this business, you, you've got a couple of freelance clients. What were some of the challenges that uh, you encountered? Because obviously a lot of people out there are <clears throat> starting a business and, you know, there's, there's ups and downs as we, uh, as we all know. Yeah. So what were some of your earliest challenges and how did you overcome them? Definitely the, ear- the biggest, earliest challenge was getting started and overcoming information overload because it's easy to overthink like the perfect offer um, seeing what everyone else is doing, worrying about what you're going to charge and you can really like get in your head about it. Um, and I got some great advice from a copywriter to just ask my audience what they wanted. And so I start, I created like a Google form, um, and I went to SEO agency owners that I hadn't worked with and asked them like, what is your biggest struggle when it comes to sourcing SEO content? And they basically gave me exactly what I needed in terms of framing the copy on my website and also my offers, right? So I assumed that they wanted traffic or content that generated traffic, but really their biggest pain point was engaging content that um, came from consistent writers. So engaging in consistency. Um, and those were like my big two selling points. Um, and so while all the writers were trying to undercut each other's prices and, you know, I could have gotten in the weeds with them and trying to figure out, you know, how do I do the same offer that they're doing, but charge less to be competitive. I focus on what my audience wanted, um, wrote like, you know, social media posts that like communicated how I was different from all these writers. And then it just like, it just gave me a lot of clarity. I wasn't worrying about what everyone else was doing, right? Like I was worried about what my audience wanted and like the pain points that they had with all these other people. If I listened to all these other people, then I would just be the same as them charging, you know, four cents a word for content. Um, But instead, like I can charge much more and get amazing results for my clients and also like just kind of break through the fog. So that was the biggest thing. And I think a lot of business owners do worry about the competition a lot. And I think you should keep, you know, like your eye on them a little bit in your peripheral, but like, don't be so focused on what they're doing or what their offers are, are because you don't know if their offer is the right offer for your audience. And you might essentially try and copy what they're doing. And then you're like, why isn't this working? You know? And it's like, you haven't even asked your audience what they want um, or why you know, they're frustrated with all these other options. So uh, that was the biggest thing. I think another thing was uh, like understanding finances. So I'm not like a super numbers focused person. 
Um, and my first hire was an accountant. Uh, so I could thoroughly understand like what my numbers were, right? Like if I made a $30,000 a month, like is that $30,000 in my pocket or is half of that going to contractors, a third of what's remaining going to taxes and I'm taking home $2,000, let's say hypothetically. Like I needed to know those numbers in order to make education, educated decisions about who I was going to hire and a lot of new business owners just really have no idea, right? Like they see revenue, they see money coming into their bank account and expenses going out, but they don't really have a good idea of like how much money they actually have that's theirs, how much is profit for the business, how much to allocate to contractors, how much they have to set aside for taxes. Uh, and so if you're getting started, I definitely recommend getting an accountant right away. And mine cost me like, at the start, I think it was $130 or $150 a quarter. And now it's up to like $100 uh, a month and like $500 to file or something. But it's not insane. Like those are really reasonable costs. And it's like saved my butt a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, that's the big thing. I've seen a lot of businesses really start drowning because they think they're killing it. Like they made 10 grand three months in a row and they think it's time to hire an assistant or invest in Instagram marketing and all of that. And then they're just like, Oh my God, like I can't afford to pay my rent. Like where did this money go? Um, it disappears faster than you think. So you need to be on top of that. That's the biggest thing. So awesome. Yeah. So with all of the work you've done in terms of SEO content and copy, what are some uh, tips or tricks you can maybe share with the audience in terms of thinking about how to frame up good writing? Some people, obviously, I would encourage everybody watching this to, to go check you out if they can afford your services. You've already <laughs> alluded to the fact that you're not four cents a word, so this is not for people that are on a uh, tight budget. This is for people who want to scale up and are willing to invest in quality. Um, yeah. But that being said, you've probably gained a tremendous amount of experience in terms of framing up copy and content. Anything that you would uh, share with the audience? Yeah. Um, I mean, first thing, I do share a lot of free information on my website. Uh, I also have a Facebook group that just is free information for people because there are a lot of business owners that are like bootstrapping and want to take the DIY approach. Um, and that's like the best resource, resource because it's like step by step, right? And like screenshots and tools and all the stuff that you can use because SEO content or SEO in general can be sort of nitty gritty. Um, but I kind of, you know, alluded to this with focusing on your audience. If you're, if you thoroughly understand what your audience wants, that will inform your keyword research, right? So if you're making assumptions that your audience is looking for digital marketing services because you're a digital marketing agency, but you haven't actually asked them, um, you might be missing the mark in terms of keyword targeting. Like maybe they're Googling how to get more leads. Maybe they're not Googling digital marketing agency, um, just as an example. And so really understanding your audience's pain points will inform the keywords that you want to target. Um, and then you can kind of brain dump this entire list of terms that your audience might hypothetically use to find services like yours. And then use SEO keyword tools to look at the search volume and competition level. So digital marketing agency, there's so many of them, highly competitive, but also high search volume. So maybe there's a keyword that gets a decent amount of search volume, like a thousand searches a month, but is not super competitive. And the keyword research tools will tell you that. And then you can be more confident targeting those, especially if you're a small agency. So if you like Google, some tr term that you want to rank for, let's say I wanted to rank for SEO agency. And then I see that like, I don't know, Moz is ranking number one and like all these big SEO companies are dominating the first page. Then I'm gonna be like, as a small business owner, I'm gonna be like, I probably don't have a good chance of ranking, but maybe SEO content agency or SEO copywriter or something a little bit more niche specific. Mm -hmm. um, and since I know that my audience is looking for SEO content services and SEO copywriters, then I can know, like, I know that those keywords are good for my site. So don't make assumptions on the keywords that you think you want to target. Like ask your audience what they're looking for. If you really don't have any clue and then try and get inside their heads that hypothetically, what are they Googling in order to 
land on the information, like land on your website, the information you provide, the services you provide, um, and then use the keyword research tools like as the data to decide if a keyword is actually uh, like not too competitive, but decent search volume. Um, so that's on the keyword research side of things. Um, in terms of content, right, like I do recommend just Googling like SEO content best practices. Um, don't overthink it. So like Google's algorithm is getting a lot smarter at understanding context. Uh, through AI, you know, machine learning and stuff like that. So using your focus keyword, like, you know, 10 times in the page and in the title tag and the URL is like becoming less important because Google can interpret from the content uh, what the main topic is and match it to like the intent behind the search. Mm -hmm. um, and so don't try to shoehorn the, the keyword into your content, right? Just, you should be focusing, again, on what the audience wants to read, what's going to provide the most value to them, and then also looking at what's currently the ranking and making sure you're actually providing something that's better than what's already there. Because if it's not better, then Google doesn't have an incentive to rank it above <laughs> what's um, already ranking. Um, so... Pull, like get away from the idea that you have to like use keywords a certain number of time or try to trick the Google algorithm. Like Google's whole incentive, right, is to provide the best content or match per, to the user search because it encourages people to keep using their platform. Google makes money in term, like from, you know, their ad revenue and stuff like that and everybody's happy. So yeah, focus on the user first. That's what I would awesome. say. <laughs> So if we traveled back in time four years and we were talking to a slightly younger version of yourself, what are two or three pieces of advice you would give to that younger version of yourself knowing that you're going to kick off your, your business? Yeah, I was like thinking about this for a while. Uh, da, 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 da. Stay away from like the shoulds. Like if the, the, any sort of idea you see someone doing something a certain way and you're like i should do that but it doesn't actually feel to get we will aligned with what you really want to do um you're just going to end up like resenting the work that you do right so there was a moment a long moment where i was like i want to become this giant seo content agency and like hire a bunch of writers you know do high volume content and i was just like resisting it the entire time but there's this idea that I should do it this way because other people are doing it this way and that's how you start like a create a billion dollar company right um and it just wasn't in line with like my morals and well not not really morals but goals and like why I started my business which is freedom and I just was having a hard time managing myself out of something like that so that's the biggest thing like you'll see a lot of shiny things like, oh, someone else is making a lot of money with e-commerce. Maybe I should get into e-commerce. Or, you know, like my competitor is doing Google Ads. Maybe I should do Google Ads, like knowing that your audience doesn't use Google, hypothetically. Um, just because someone else is doing it doesn't mean you should do it. Um, do, 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 what else? I've been pretty good about this, but I would also say, like, not hiring when you're at like a peak, uh, because there will be a valley usually. And so if you feel like you're on top of the world, you just had a couple like killer months, let's say two, and you're like, now I wanna hire my personal assistant and someone to handle sales calls and also do LinkedIn lead generation. Uh, unless you take in the time to like structure your business in a way that's like consistently bringing leads in, you might end up hiring ahead of things. And then when you do hit a valley, then you're like, Oh, I can't afford to pay these people. <laughs> um, <laughs> so like I said, I've been like pretty good about that, but there have been some times that I've like onboarded, like taken on a new writer and then the work hasn't come in and I'm like, sorry, I don't have work for you. And that's just like a crappy feeling. <laughs> um, and that happens like in my business cause I do big projects and like ongoing. Um, but just like, it's easy to get like really excited about things and start throwing money at stuff and like just pause, like pause for a day and like think about it um, and see if you can set up some systems. So I think that was two things. Yeah, that's great. So yeah. uh, you mentioned travel. That was freedom was one of the uh, driving forces for you starting yeah. this business. So what are uh, some of the uh, best places you've traveled to? 
That's a good question. Uh, every place is like a little different. So I have a hard time picking like my favorite, but um, I went to Spain for a month. And so to be able to like live in Spain for a month and like be able to work, but also be working like a couple hours a day max and have to take time off was really nice, like amazing food and beaches and architecture there. Um, and, you know, traveling around without like the stress. I'm like, this is like why I started this business, right? It's not to be in a beautiful location, but behind my computer is to be able to like work a little in the morning and go to sightsee and stuff like that and come back and like take a call and, you know, get a good dinner and stuff like that. Um, so Spain is definitely up there on the list. And then also Cambodia, just because it's like a place that people were like, don't go there. You're going to get like gutted like a fish and <laughs> like we get blown up by landmines and stuff. Like literally people said that. Um, and I've gone twice at this point and I think I've spent a collective like three months there and I love it. It's, I felt like nothing but safe and it was really cool to see some places that were, relatively untouched by tourism and just like a totally different culture and like also seeing like real poverty face to face is like very eye opening. Um, and also just like they have like a very deep, but somewhat dark history with like a lot of stuff going. I'm not going to, you know, make everyone sad about that, but <laughs> there's like a lot of interesting things to see there that like, if your, your perspective is just like Western culture, like U S and Europe, and you don't see something like that, like it really puts a lot of things into perspective. So for awesome. sure. So if people want to go deeper in and, and, or uh, talk to you about your service, where's the best place for us to send them online? Yeah, probably to my website, which is keysandcopy.com. I also have a Facebook group, which is Right to Rank. Uh, and it will say like SEO, copywriting, content marketing. Uh, so those are the two best places. Um, yeah, there's a lot of free resources on my blog. But also if, I mean, my, my name is like pretty popular, so I don't know what's going to come up. But <laughs> if you Google my name, a lot of search engine journal articles and stuff will come up. And there's like a lot of in-depth resources through some of my guest posts and like contributions. So there's a lot of information out there. I'm everywhere. <laughs> so, yeah. That's great. Well, thank you so much the for website. taking the time today and uh, joining us and sharing your journey and your story um, and how you've managed to create success in four short years, which is awesome to hear. Guys, if you're watching this, definitely hit the thumbs up button. If you have any questions or comments, drop them below. Happy to engage with you here on the channel and we'll see you in the next episode.